Okay, uh, good morning, students. My name is Selma Kambode. I'm going to take you through school subject accounting, module one. Okay, uh, what is accounting? If somebody asks you what is accounting, how are you going to define the term accounting? Accounting is a systematic process of identifying, classifying, recording, and interpreting business transactions. We are going to, uh, to look at the cycle of accounting, where we are going to see how the process works for accounting. It first starts with identifying um, a, a business transaction that takes place in the business, either check or, or, or with cash. Then we are now going to classify this transaction. Was it a petty cash transaction? Was it a credit transaction or was it a cash cash book, uh, cash uh, transaction so that we will know where are we going to record this uh, transaction in the books of first entry and then we start recording them and then later we are going to interpret because the reason why we are doing accounting is because we want to see how the business is performing and we can only understand the performance of the business after we have recorded after we have uh, identified all this business transaction and then we are going to interpret all the uh, all the um, figures that we got the aim of accounting is a subject we are trying to equip learners with understanding of accounting principles to develop learners to understand how to interpret and evaluate recorded data for decision making because at the end of the day reason the reason why we want to do accounting is because we want to do business decision we want to see how the business is performing so that at the end of the day we know what we are going to do in our business either to what are the strategy that we are going to to, to, to implement that to enable the business to prosper in the future to improve learners numeric, uh, numerical and financial management skills to teach learners how to prevent and detect misappropriation of funds such as fraud, waste, and theft in a business. The aims of accounting continues. It aims also to help people better access opportunity, product investment, social and community responsibility, to report on the performance of a business, what the business owns, what the business owes, and open eyes for new opportunities. So those are the aims of accounting. Now we are going to look at some of the important terms that are used, usually or commonly used in accounting. We have transaction, we have accounts, we have T accounts, we have debit, we have debit entry, and so on. Then I'm going to explain each one of it. What is a transaction? A transaction is an action that takes place between two parties. So... It can take place whereby somebody gives in the money in exchange for a good or a service. Then that is a transaction. Account. A name used to categorize money owned, money owed, or spent or received in a business. T account, this is just a ledger format separating the debit and the credit side. So the T account is drawn like this one whereby we have a credit side and the debit side so this is an account so we'll know where to record it and, and so on okay a debit side is always on the left hand side of an account while the credit side is always on the right hand of the side okay debit entry an entry made on the debit side so i can write a, a, a debit entry cash let's say for example uh we receive payment from our debtors in cash okay so we are going to say data and then cash on the debit side because data is an asset and the assets are always increasing on the debit side okay then we go to uh do credit entry credit entry are accounts that are always increasing or recorded on the credit side so this is my credit side which is on my right hand side so maybe we pay off our debt i mean our creditors we pay for example with bank with a check with bank or eft electronic transfer of uh, five thousand namibian dollar to our supplier which we owe we were owing in from 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 beginning of the year so we are going to record this uh transaction on the credit side of the of the t account Accounting cycle. This is a sequential process of completing the recording process of business transaction. Like I mentioned earlier, it starts from identifying the, the, 
the, the, the transaction must take place, then we are going to, 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 to sort this transaction is the cash transaction whereby it's going to be recorded in the cash book until, until it goes. Okay. This is the accounting cycle. Uh, transaction occurs, that is number one. Source document, receipts, credit notes, checks, invoices. Number three, book of first entry. We are also going to look at the types, the six types of books of first entry. I'm going to talk about them today. After we have recorded in the books of first entry, we are going to the next um, step, which is posting this information from the books of first entry to the ledger accounts. Then we are going to balance off these ledger accounts. After that, we are now going to do the trial balance to see if there were errors done through the process. So for me, a trial balance is like a filter that um, I um, d uh, detect errors made through the whole process. If there are no errors, then our trial balance is going to balance. If they, it doesn't balance, it means there are errors, then we are going to, 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 to rectify them. After that, then we are going to pre, uh, prepare uh, the financial statements. When we are talking about the financial statement, we are talking about the income statement as well as the balance sheet. Okay. Now, the main question will come in asking, who are the users? We are talking about users of accounting information. Who are these people that will be interested in, 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 in using this information? Uh, users of accounting information, we are having two categories. Category one is internal users, people within an organization or people within uh, a business organization that will want or that will be interested in using this information. We have external users. These are people from outside that they will want or they will be interested in seeing this information. Okay. Uh, internal users will be the owner of the business. After they invested so much in the business, they want to see how the business is progressing. Employees, they want to see if their jobs are secure. They want to see how the business is performing because the, if the business is successful, is doing well, it means the possibility of their job being secure is high. Otherwise, if the company is doing so bad, the possibility of these employees losing their job is very, very high. Okay, then we go to the external users. External users are banks to assess the business who will be able to pay books. Just in, in case maybe at the initial um, of the business, the business wants to borrow money from this, uh, from this uh, bank. The, the bank will want to know if the company is making profit or not. Okay. Uh, potential investor, people who want to invest in the company, the government also want to know how the business is doing for their VAT and tax on the profit that the company is, is making. Customers and suppliers to assess the business solvency before entering a trading relationship. Those are the external uses of the, of the accounting information. The local community, those are the reasons to why they want to be interested in the business in accounting. Uh, competitors, economics analysis, members of the general public. Those are the people that will be interested in using the accounting information. Okay. Um, we are now going to talk about money measurement and business entity. Money um, measurement uh, principle states that only transaction that can be expressed in monetary terms should be reflected in the business records. If a, let me give you an example. If a business sold its car with an exchange of, uh, of cows or goats or whatever, as long as those items that were exchanged for the car that was sold by that company are not in, expressed in monetary terms, we are not going to record such a transaction. We only record transactions that are in monetary value, and that is what the money measurement principle is stating. Okay, 
There's another example given there. Okay? Another one is, another principle is business entity principle. What does it state? It states that only transaction which affects the business affairs should be reflected in the business record. Any other tra transaction that is taking place in the business that does not affect the, the business records cannot be recorded in the business uh, transaction. There is another example given. Let's say, for example, the owner uh, take business assets, cash, goods, etc., to cover personal expenses should be treated as drawing in the books of because it affects the business. We cannot regard the owner's personal transaction in the transaction books as this has nothing to do with the business uh, but only the owner. Okay? So we know what to record in our business uh, transaction and what to not, uh, we are not supposed to record. Okay, there are three branches of accounting. Cost and management accounting, part of accounting concerned with the provision of information to interested parties inside the business to help with decision making. Okay, this is the information that we are going to get after recording all the transaction because the managers of the business who want to make decisions based on the results that are obtained from the income from the accounting information. That is branch number one. Branch number two, we are talking about financial accounting. Part of accounting concern with providing necessary information to interested users outside like outside and inside the business. This is what I was just explaining now the reason why we have so many users, either internal or external users, they want information to, um, to see how the business is performing. The third branch is auditing. Auditing part of the accounting used to determine whether the recorded information is the true reflection of the business transaction which occurred during the year. When we are talking about auditing here, we are talking about auditing is just to verify, to make sure that information before they get out um, to the to the to the external users, they this uh, financial information either the income statement and the balance sheet, they, will be, they should be free of errors before they are presented to people who will be interested in leading this, reading this information. So auditing just to make sure that all the information presented in the income statements are a true reflection of what really happened in the business. This is just an example of financial management, accounting, uh, and auditing. Financial accounting provide external user with financial statements. Management accounting provide information needs for internal decision making. Auditing check whether information communicated to internal and external users are truly reflected transactions that occur during the year. There are no mistakes. Why do we need computers in accounting? It's another question. Due to changes in modern business uh, finances, it's very important to use uh, to be compu computerized to record in uh, business transactions. Compu computerized business record increases accuracy and efficiency. Through information communication technology, computers are help with the communication between the business and customers so that, let's say, for example, you want to market, you want to communicate with your customers, use the supply, it's very easy to use ICT. Instead of keeping stock pile of paper record in the office, the computers can store all the information in one place and it's, and it's, you are able to assess any time when you need this information. Now we are going to look at the classification of accounts. There are five uh, accounts which we are going also to look at it, them in more details, like giving example and more explanation to each of the accounts we have assets things that belongs to a business owner's equity value you invest in your business liabilities thing that you owe okay income money you earn on a normal business activity expenses money you spend on normal business activities all right look as assets we have two types of assets. We have 
current asset, we have fixed asset or non-current asset. Sometimes they refer to it as non-current assets. So now I'm going to define an asset. And assets are properties of value that belongs to a business and they will last in the business for a long period of time. Okay, property, process, possession, or resources owned by the business. Example of assets, we have a current assets. These are property, possession, or resources owned by the business lasting less than a year. They don't last long. These are current assets. I'm going to give you examples such as cash. It can be uh, converted quickly within a year. You can't have cash for the whole year. Let's say, for example, you have cash of 500. It lasts for only a short period of time. Okay? Uh, we have bank, we have petty cash, we have debtors, and so on. Fixed asset, we are talking about property possession of resources owned by the business lasting more than a year. Here we are talking about land, building, machinery, equipment, anything in the business that will last for a long period of time. That is a fixed asset, they are fixed, or sometimes referred to as non-current asset. There are examples of current assets here. There are examples of non-current assets. We have non uh, current assets, cash, like I mentioned them already. Look at them. You can see. Okay? Uh, non-current assets, they are here. You can see. Goodwill, fixed de deposit, patents, trademark, copyrights, fixture, and fitting. Those are examples of non-current assets. Owner's equity, the owner's monetary interest in the business. Owner's investment, capital, owner's uh, withdrawal, that is drawings. Those, you can see them already. They, these two, drawings or capital, capital increases owner's equity and drawings decreases owner's equity. Because when we are talking about uh, uh, drawings, we are talking about a situation where the owner uh, decides to take good or goods or money for their own personal use. Why capital? The money that was invested by the owner to start up a business. Okay, we have it there. And we also have income and expenses. Income and expenses accounts. Income money generated uh, from business activity, money earned from selling of goods or rendering services. Expenses, these are money uh, spent in day-to-day -day business activity to enable the business to run smoothly. Example of expenses we have there. Rent repaid, carried in while, bank charges, rates, repair, advertising, stationary for material costs, cleaning expenses, interest paid, bad debts, those are ex depreciations, motor expenses, these are trading lessons, these are examples of expenses. Income is the money we receive in our business as we are selling our goods or we have rendered services to our customers. We, have, we are talking about current income. We are talking about rent received, we are talking about interest received, we are talking about uh, bed de debt recovered, commission received. There are so many you can look. There are so many, okay? Uh, liabilities is another third account in accounting. Money the business owes to suppliers, lenders, or other businesses. When the business, your business is owing somebody, that becomes those people that you are owing can be people can be suppliers can be other banks whoever or other businesses and that one is what we call liabilities okay we liabilities are, are also divided into uh two groups we have current liabilities we have long-term liabilities again current liabilities are the amount of money we owe to our lenders, which we supposed to pay over a short period of time, then we call them current liability. Okay, and then long term liability. These are the money we owe other people, which we need to pay within a very long period of time, more than a year. Okay, examples of current liability and non-current liability or sometimes referred to as long-term liability. We have creditors, we have current liability. I'm starting with the current liability. We have creditors, bank overdraft, short-term loan, income received in advance, 
while on the long-term liabilities we are talking about long-term loans long-term debitures and mortgage bond accounting equation accounting equation is a mathematical expression used to describe the relationship between the assets liability owner's equity in the business we can see assets is on the other side the debit side and then owner's equity and liability are on the other side which is the credit side that is the expression uh, accounting equation states that assets is equal to owner's equity plus liability okay i've already given you examples of liabilities examples of assets examples of owner's equities so now we will not have any problem when we are going to classify them okay let me give you an example owners contribute money into the business how does this affect owner's equity capital is the one which is contributed and capital increases okay that's why you see capital with a positive sign owner took money goods for own use that is drawing and then it decreases owner's equity because the money was taken from the business account for own use. Donation of good or money. When we are giving out donation, let's say for example your business is donating to charity organization or to school or to vulnerable people in the community. So the money that you are going to donate is going to be subtracted from a business account and that decreases your owner's equity. When you sell goods or render services to a customer, you receive money coming into your business and therefore your income is increasing your owner's equity. Buy goods or pay for service rendered, that is an expense. And expenses are decreasing owner's equity because when you are going to pay off something, you are using the money that you withdraw from a business account and then you are subtracting it from the business account and then later your owner's equity are decreasing. Okay. Both income and expenses account affect the future profit of the, of the owner through owner's equity. More expenses means more loss for the future. More income means more, more profit for the, for, for, for the future. More capital means owner will mean money is generated more in the future. And more drawing means uh, less money to generate future profits. Now we are going to look at one of the very, very important uh, issue, which most of the students are always failing to understand and to, to know. We are now going to talk about the golden rules. Let's start with the assets. Assets, all types of assets, whether fixed assets or let me say non-current assets or current assets they all increases on the debit side if the business is receiving cash or receiving check or payment from debtors that is assets we are talking about and more money is coming in the business that is an asset either bank or cash and whatever we make or we get such uh, in uh, such 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 money in the business we record all the cash assets are always increasing on the debit side and then when we are all paying off our debts or we and when we are making payment when we are de uh, our assets are decreasing they decrease on the credit side we go to rule number two owner's equity owner's equity increases increases on the credit side and decreases on the debit side okay we are going to drawing drawing is most part of the uh, um we have capital capital when uh, when the owner uh, contribute capital to the business capital always increases on the debit on the credit side and decreases on the credit side so now you know all right drawings they decrease on the credit side and they increase on the debit side we have expenses expenses are always increasing on the expenses 
expenses if you are recording transaction that affects that has uh, assets assets increases on the debit side and the decreases on the credit side income income the increases on the credit side and they decrease on the debit side liability is the same treatment as the income liability they increases on the credit side and they decreases on the debit side so you are supposed to master that those accounting rule so that you know when you are doing your accounting equation and you are presented with uh, such accounts you know how you are going to treat them are you going to record it, it on the debit side or on the credit side it depending to the nature of the transaction okay we have a uh, cash and credit transaction there are two types of transaction the cash transaction where the customer pay right away by cash or check for item bought or service rendered this are cash transaction or where the customer pay at a later stage for item bought or service rendered these are credit transaction this is an example of a okay study example here Amurungu, we are just going to do number one. This is an accounting equation example. Amurungu opened a mini market on the 1st of July 2014. Invested 12,000 as his capital, out of which 10,000 deposited into the bank at the business uh, current account. Maybe the other 2,000 uh, will be as cash. Let's see how it's recorded. Okay? See, assets are increasing with how much? With 2,000 because that one is case. While bank is increasing with 10,000. What did I say about assets? Where do, how do we record such transaction? Assets are always increasing on the debit side and this is what is done. And then what about uh, capital? What is capital? Capital asset is increasing on which side? Debit side. If you can see this uh, 12,000 capital increase it is the credit side of the of the of the, uh, the the recording maybe we can pick another transaction i want a transaction that has um on the 20th of july he bought goods on credit 3000 from sandu store by check okay if i have, i have to record this one on 20th July, he bought goods on credit. If I have to do the T, uh, T, T account, see? What are the two accounts that are involved here? Then first thing is you have to add, uh, 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 identify the two accounts that are involved. We have Sandu Store. Sandu Store is a supplier who sold... Oh, oh, no. Oh, oh, there are two. Okay. There is Sandu stores, there is Tito stores, and what else? And there is the another account which is bank. Those are the three accounts. How are you going to record this one? Okay, okay. On the 20th of July, he bought goods on credit, 3000 from Sandu. Okay, credits. This is debit side, this is credit side, this is debit side, this is credit side, this is debit side, this is credit side. Okay, how are you going to record this one? Sandu store is a creditor because from his shop, things were bought on credit, okay? When oh, oh, creditors is a liability, it's falling under liability. How do we trade liabilities? Liabilities are increasing on the credit side. So here we are going to write bank. With how much? 3000 Okay, we know. Therefore, bank is our ba bank is is an asset. Our assets are decreasing because we have to pay off this. So we are going to say Sandu store three thousand. Okay, then we go to Tito. Again in Tito, things were also bought on credit. So we are going to say bank. How much did we buy from Tito? 2000 
and then again bang is also going to decrease bang is it ah no 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 yeah bank this is two thousand okay now we are going to look at the books where transactions have to be recorded cash book we have petty cash we have debtors um journal we have creditors journal we have debtors return we have creditors return and we have general journal. Now I'm going to explain to you what is it that we need to record in, this, in these books. The cash book is where we record all important cash transactions, all important cash transactions that takes place in the business. Why in the petty cash we are recording only small cash transaction? Anything that is less than 100 Namibian dollar that needs to be paid off we are using petty cash book. Data's journal here, we record all credit sales. If our business is selling goods on credit, we record all this information in our data's journal. Credit's journal, we record all credit purchases. Anything that we buy from suppliers on credit, we record them in the creditors journal. Then we go to number five, which is the data's return journal. Data's return means when we sold our goods to customers on credit maybe there were some 40 goods that the customers were not happy with so they retained them so we have to take the records of things that were brought back to us and we record them in the debtors return the same applies to creditors return this is when maybe things that we bought previously from our suppliers we were not really happy with then now we have to record them back to, uh, we have to re return them back to our suppliers and this is where we are going to record in our uh, creditors return journal. Uh, general journal is another book of first entry because all these seven books, this is what we call books of first entry. So in our general journal, this is where we record all transaction that doesn't fit or doesn't fit in all the six other books. Any other transaction that doesn't fit in any of the other six books are going to be recorded in the general journal. Okay. We are now going to look at the cash book. We have a cash book. We have a two caram cash book and we have a, a three caram cash book. Uh, the two caram uh, cash book is the one which is very, very simple with, with only bank and cash caram only. Why the three caram cash book is having three caram cash bank and the discount where maybe when you buy something and you receive discount or when you sell something and you receive it and you give discount which is discount allowed that is another type of cash book we have we have a petty cash book having smaller caram for cash small payments only okay this is an example of a format of a cash book you see you can see again a cash book is also designed in a t format whereby we have a debit side we have a credit side see all the money we receive as we are give, doing business transaction cash are recorded on the debit side hmm? anything so you are now going to see are you going to record is it was it was that the transaction uh done with cash or the payment was uh, done through bank then you are going to record accordingly the same applies to credit side you know then the credit side is where we are going to record all the payment uh, the payment that took place in the business. Any payment. Then you are now going to look the, 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 the payment took place using cash or was it the bank? So you know no where to record. Okay? Document number, you write the date, the detail, what what is the what is the detail of the transaction, the for your number, is it bank, then you record. If it's not bank, then it's cash, you know what to record. The same applies to the debits, I mean to the credit side, we have document number date details for your number etc this is just the format of a cash book then we have three types of ledger like i said after uh, this is just a process after we have recorded this accounting information we record them in the books of first entry after the books of first entry that we spoke about in the in the previous slide we are now going to post this information in the ledgers so that we can close off like barras off we start with the debtors ledger used to track like records of all debtors individual account okay 
Creditors ledger used to track records of all creditors' individual account. So general ledger used to track records of all other business accounts other than debtors and creditors, such as asset capital drawing. See, this one deals with any other item that does not fall under either creditors or debtors. Debtors ledger. It contains account of all customers whom goods have been sold on credit. Okay. Creditors uh, ledgers, it contains account of all supplier with whom goods have been bought on credit. Okay. Um, I want to explain something quickly here. Credit sales. Transactions. The classifications of transactions. We have credit sales. All credit sales, like I said, they are recorded in the debtor's journal. Okay? Credit purchase. When we are going to, uh, to buy goods on credit from our suppliers, they are recorded on the, in the creditor's journal. Return inwards. What does it mean? Return inwards is when we have sold goods previously to our customers and now our customer have to return these 40 goods to us then we call it return inwards and then we are going to record this thing this information in the returns inwards journal return outwards this is where we have to return some of the 40 goods to our suppliers so and then we record this one in the return outwards journal we have the cash and check receive and payment. This information goes in the cash book. We have other other means. Transition that doesn't fall either in the debtors general, creditors general, return inwards general and so forth, cash book or whatsoever. This general transaction, any other transaction, they will fall, they will be recorded in the general journal okay what else was that that i wanted to bring to your attention um maybe to look at the quick exercise on on our case study example on the 31st of july he took the owner of the business he took cash to pay his personal rent 500 and his business rent 800 that is a total drawing of how much that is 1300 if i'm not mistaken that is total drawing so here need reading um that transaction what are the two accounts that are involved we are talking about cash and we are talking about drawings okay let's see how it's recorded that's number what number is it Okay, here. This rent paid, is it rent paid or business? Okay, business rent is for, 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 for the business. How it's recorded. What are the two accounts here? They are there on this slide. We have drawings is increasing. And when drawings is increasing, it decreases our owner's equity. And we have cash, which is also decreasing of 1,300, like I said. And that is an asset decreasing. And then I said assets are increasing on which side? On the credit side. Okay. Then rent paid expenses increasing. And it's also decreasing our owner's equity. Uh, guys, okay. Maybe you don't. For those who will not understand this one. Okay, if you have your own personal account, to me that will be like an owner's equity, okay? Personal account, owner's equity. Okay, let's say for example, you receive money, you receive some payment, 
that money that you receive, they will be deposited in your bank account. Of course, your bank account will increase with that amount of money that you receive from the person who paid you. All right? It's the same applies to what we are talking about here in the business. It's only that now we are talking about, we are using a, an example of a personal account. Okay. If the next morning you decide to go to town to pay for water and electricity bills at your house, let's say, for example, the water and electricity bills is 300 Namibian dollars. Let's say in your bank account, that 300, because you are going to withdraw it from your bank account, your bank account is going to be subtracted with the 300 Namibian dollars. So that is exactly what I'm trying to explain to you here with an owner's equity. So any money that comes in a business, it increases owner's equity. Any payment made by the business, it decreases owner's equity. So that is what we are trying to say. Okay? Um, now, these ledgers that are here, entry for each individual debtors are posted to these ledgers, the debtors' ledgers now. Information entered in debtors' ledger is taken from the debtors' journal, debtors' return journal, cash book, and general journal. The purpose of this ledger is to calculate the amount of money owed by different customers to the business. So the reason why we do debtors ledger, we just want to see how much in total our debtors are owing us. Maybe there are people who do not understand what are, what is a debtor. A debtor, are peop, debtors are people that are owing the business. Let's say, for example, you sold goods to your customers on credit. Those people who bought from you on credit, those ones, they become your data. And I, and I said, a data is an asset because we are going to receive payment from these debtors in future. So these people are going to receive, to give us money in future when they are going to pay off their, their debts. So this is done by opening each customer's account separately and recording all transaction thereof. Okay. Creditors ledger. It contains accounts of all suppliers from whom goods have been bought on credit. Okay. Each entry for each individual creditor are posted to this ledger. Information entered in creditors' ledger is taken from the creditors' journal, creditors' return journal, cash book, and general journal. The purpose of this ledger is to calculate the amount of money owed to different suppliers by the business. So, in the course of the year, for example, this business, your business have been uh, buying uh, goods from suppliers or from other businesses on credit. They need to take uh, to, to to note them down to take a uh, track of this uh, 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 supplier with whom they owe money. So these suppliers are what we call creditors. Creditors means people we owe, and then in future we need to pay them back. So we have to record all this uh, uh, credit transaction that we have bought goods on credit from other suppliers. This is done by opening each supplier's account separately and recording all this transaction thereof. Okay? Um, we have reached the end of our presentation. All I want to emphasize on is just on the rules of accounting. They are very, very important because every transaction that you are going to come across in accounting questions, as long as you know the rules of accounting, then you are safe. Let's say, for example, assets. Let's start with assets. Assets always in anything. If you know that you are dealing with assets and more of assets are coming in the business, then record on the debit side. If your assets are decreasing, record on the credit side. When you are talking about liabilities, when more of the liabilities are coming in your business, please know where to record in your tier accounts. So liabilities, all liabilities are recorded on the 
credit side, when more liabilities are, arise, are, are arising, why liabilities when they are decreasing, maybe you have been paying off your creditors, then record such transaction on the debit side. As long as you are aware of your accounting rules, then you are not going to, to get it wrong. One thing also that I want to bring to your attention is I see most of the students are confusing books of first and sometimes you are given a mixture of of transaction where you need to sort which one goes to which book and which one goes to which book just know that if you are dealing with important cash transaction big amount of money paid cash or received with cash then that is a cash book transaction if goods were sold on credit to debtors that is a debtors uh, 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 a general if you are buying goods on credit from supplier, your business is the one buying goods on credit from supplier. That is now the creditors journal. Okay? The returns is easy. Just know that this one is returned from supplier, then that becomes what? This one is returned to, then becomes what? So as long as you know how to categorize, you know which one is the, which book of ent first entry you are dealing with, then you are not going to get it wrong. Okay? I think uh, I've come to the end of the presentation. Uh, thank you very much. All the best in your studies. Prepare. Accounting very, very simple. You just need to, to love and enjoy the subject. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.